my gentle and of course very modern apes, I've got a real treat for you today. We are going to be watching one of perhaps the most ironic videos that I've ever seen here on www.youtube.com. This video encompasses a conversation had between a handful of creationists, a couple of which are young earth creationists, and a polytheist. The polytheist is going to be arguing against evolution, and accidentally, the young earth creationists are going to be arguing for it. I find this to be an absolute delight, so join me in this little stroll of ours into the darkest depths of some of the most uh, uh, far reaches of YouTube.com. So this video is on the YouTube channel Logical Plausible Probable, run by a one John Maddox, that guy up there, titled The LPP. Um, I have opinions about both this channel and the folks who are here, so let's get that out of the way right off the bat. Below us here is Sentinel Apologetics. He's a theistic evolutionist, generally a cool guy. I've, I've never had any issues with him, and he seems pretty smart. Sunflower, who is over here, also a chill dude. I think he's theistic evolutionist as well. Um, no qualms there. Uh, Sal over here at the upper whatever, I, uh, directions are weird because it's like mirrored. Um, Sal, I like Sal. Sal's a young earth creationist. There are a lot of people here on YouTube who have opinions about Sal. I've never had an issue with Sal. I think he's a real sweet dude. Um, and his expression currently right there, like that, that is just going to, like that's, that's going to be an excellent accompaniment um, and a, a very proper reaction to pretty much this entire video, at least on my end. Um, Patrick, that guy, Andrew Graham, Eddie Chapman, and the dude below me, Joel or Joel, I, I've heard people say it both ways. Um, not in real life, just on YouTube. <laughs> Um, I don't know these guys. I don't really have opinions on them. And Bubble down here on our bottom, whatever, your bottom right, is uh, is our antagonist of, of the evening. The main players are going to be Bubble versus Sunflower there and uh, John up there, the LPP. Um, John Maddox is a very unsavory character in my opinion. Those of you who have... Uh, followed my exploits here on YouTube know that I'm a pretty hard person to get to hate you, um, <laughs> but I really don't like John. I think that he is the absolute most concentrated distillation of the Dunning-Kruger effect that I've ever witnessed in my life, worse even than what you see over on the other Young Earth Creationist YouTube channels. Um, John has no formal education when it comes to anything in biology uh, or genetics for that matter, but he is very comfortable talking about it as if he is an authority figure uh, and doing so quite rudely in my opinion. There is a, a high lack of civility coming from this guy uh, pretty much in any interaction that he has with someone who disagrees with him. You do get that, right? Like, I, I know what you're sure. saying. I, honestly, I think you're full of crap. And you're uh, an ignorant, fine, you're, right, you're, I think you're amazingly ignorant. You, I, you, mean, somebody I, talk I feel the same way about you, John. Well, I, I don't know why you're saying it. I'll tell you what, um, when you, I, I will debate you on abiogenesis after you respond. I'm tomorrow, probably tomorrow evening, I will release my video on the code arguments. Um, if you actually give me a remotely coherent response in relation to information and coding the or information theory and communication theory and i'll have a debate with you i mean john you're the one who wanted to have a debate with me in the first place 
well, I'm not going to waste my time if you can't actually respond on that topic. Um, and I find it very humorous that, that he behaves with such arrogance because he messes up the simplest concepts of the paradigm that he's trying to overturn. He doesn't know what a ribose is. Maybe he does now, but he goofed up what a ribose is. A ribose is sugar. Um, in a debate with me where he was trying to overturn the concept of abiogenesis. Let's see. The next one is from Dapper Dino. The question is for both. How does the recent discovery of persistent ribose in asteroids impact your ideas about abiogenesis slash ID? Assuming it's the one from last year, um, <clears throat> the... There's two things about that. One, okay, they may have seen some amino acids. They think this might be a protein, not 100%, but the uh, what is often, get, often gets glossed over is the fact that this asteroid that they're referring to crashed into Africa, I think back in 1989, and they didn't, quote-unquote, discover this protein until literally 30 years later. That's like biochem 101 like you learn that in high school biology <laughs> it's like a really basic concept he also has had um demonstrated extensive misunderstandings at the very baseline cornerstone level of evolutionary theory proposing for instance that hominin fossils can be explained by phenotypic plasticity which is of course insane uh and arguing that if a human today was born with wings that would that evolutionists would be crying that this is the best evidence for evolution of all time i really want you to come in here and tell me that the if you started metamorphosizing in your lifespan that you wouldn't be running around claiming that that's an exam it's proof of evolution because exactly. somehow out of nowhere you're able to completely transform your body uh, John doesn't understand, for example, that populations not individuals evolve, um, and he consistently will, you know, try to bring the conversation back to the realm of which he does understand, which is uh, coding and um, using, like, the code requires a coder argument, so if the genetic code is a code, which it might be, then it needs a coder, uh, which is fallacious, to say the least. But in this conversation, um, you know, me dunking all over John and his impotent personality aside, in this conversation, John and Sunflower, who's chill, are going to be arguing for evolution inadvertently, which is hysterical, and Bubble is our antagonist. So let's dive right in, and I really hope that you get a real sense of the, uh, of the, <laughs> of the vibe here in this room. Um, to, to mimic Sal, it's going to be a very moment. Let's begin, shall we? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get a debate with uh, Standing for Truth. Haven't set it up yet. So, and, and like specifically, what do you want to? What topic do you want to debate? Well, it's clear evolution is. Oh, let me some things. It's clear evolution is false, but the Christian answer is also wrong. I mean, do you, do you believe the Noah story? Uh, do I, oh, sorry, referring to a global flood. Uh, no, like, uh, no, putting all the animals in the ark. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't have a problem with that one. Well, real quick, I want to highlight something else. Um, John is a young Earth creationist, okay? This is something that he very frequently tries to avoid outright defending, at least in my experience. Um, but he is a young Earth creationist, so let's remember that. Uh, in, in the back of our mind. I love the confidence that Bubble comes in here. Bubble's like, yeah, man, <laughs> evolution's wrong, but you guys are evidently just as dumb. So I, I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> Bold of you. Do you, well, here's a big problem I have with uh, people like uh, Nephilim Free and uh, I think Kent Hoven. They state that Noah brought in like this... <laughs> They think you're like, have you ever heard their kinds argument? Like, all dogs come from like one dog. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard the argument. I think the, uh, from a genetic perspective, what you have to be looking at is if there's front-loaded genomes with greater um, possibility, then all you need is, in this context, two of the. Uh, 
male female the ability for reproduction obviously in the context of having the front loaded capacity for the variations and then from there uh it's not that complicated of a premise for it to be executed so that kind of jargon spewing is very common for john um he will just outright state things as if they are um common sense now, what he just said there, with relation to the kinds argument, right, for those of you who may not know, biblical young earth creationists tend to suppose that Noah took these progenitor kinds onto the ark because two of every species won't fit on that boat. So instead, there's like a cat kind that Noah takes on the boat, and then after they'll dismount at the end of the trip, the cats diversify into their extant forms. It's fast evolution. I, I've said that a thousand times on this channel. That's what it is. Uh, and the distinctions are completely arbitrary. No, no one knows what the kinds are among the creationists. There's been stabs at it, but there is no standardized criteria for it. Now, you might be wondering, how do they diversify? How does that happen exactly? Because you have to have mutations generated to give them, you know, new information by which they can, you know, capitalize on, on certain um, adaptations in certain environments. Um, and what LPP just said there, that front-loaded genome is completely out of nowhere. It is asinine to the highest degree. It's been pushed by creationists for quite some time now, a couple of years. And it's this idea that God, like, anticipated the flood, I guess, and gave animals more genetic diversity prior to these progenitor kinds being taken onto the ark so that after they dismount, they have enough front-loaded genetic material to diversify into their extant forms. Um, and he just says that like it's totally cool, whatever. Um, there is nothing to substantiate that. That is completely nonsense, this idea of a front-loaded genome. There is nothing, they don't even know what they're looking for with regard to this front-loaded genome. It's this hypothetical, well, if we invoke magic genetics, then we can get all of the, all of the genetic diversity in just a handful of kinds. Now, in applicability, there's an even larger problem. So for instance, there are enough chiropterans or bats in existence today that in order to have all of the diversity in just two animals, you would have to have a genome that is biologically impossible in size. Genomes can only get so big, right? There are some animals that max it out in base pairs. Um, I think a lungfish are one of them. They just have enormous genomes for whatever reason. But genomes are constrained in size. So you can't physically, according to the laws of, of um, physics and their relation to how you know, uh, DNA actually holds itself together. You can't have a genome that is big enough, or yeah, that is big enough to accompany all of the bats that exist today in just one progenitor kind. In fact, you can, ha you can have more than that and it's still not gonna work. Um, so right off the bat, a lot of front-loaded gibberish there. Um, none of that makes any sense. It's completely unsubstantiated, but uh, John is cool just saying that it happens, you know, uh, it's, it's fine, don't worry about it. In terms sure. of rapid speciation. So, okay. Rapid speciation. You mean evolution. <laughs> That's what it is. They just don't like the word. And so everybody's aware of, aware of that, um, that argument. Well, here's the problem. Like, to me, that's just a rescue device. This is really nonsense. True. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love this. I love Bubble coming in here because Bubble is kind of a wacko on a lot of stuff that he's going to come in and say later. But at the very least, he can point out this inconsistency among the young Earth creationists where he's like, ah, yeah, that's just, um, it's nonsense. To me, to say that, to, to say, a, to say like a, a, a wolf will eventually give birth to like a chihuahua because there was this front-loaded genome is, um, it's, it's a stretch. It's like, that's just that's just not how it works. So, are you suggesting that through artificial selection, that if you took two wolves, you don't think it's possible you could end up with a chihuahua? No, you Given wouldn't. It? No, you would never end up with a chihuahua. So, of course, Bubble is incorrect on this. We we know for a fact that dogs come from wolves. We find dog wolf hybrids in the fossil record spanning from about 40,000 years ago to now. We can trace dog genetics back and find out that they they um. They converge on this gray wolf-like organism living approximately 
30, 40,000 years ago. This is like really basic stuff. And, you know, to, to back it up, like, Sunflower and John are right in this argument, right? Dogs did come from wolves. But the way that they're going to argue this is it, it's just evolution. They're, they're using evolutionary concepts to actually get themselves there. So that's sort of like the premise that I'm that I'm talking about is directly supported. Like people agree with this. This has like been discussed by dog breeders about how yes, you could, you give it enough time, you could, uh, and through artificial selection, you'd be able to pull it off. Given enough time and through artificial selection, artificial selection is just natural selection, but humans pick the traits. So theoretically, right? And this has been observed, I say theoretically because it's a part of evolutionary theory, but it's also been observed, right? Natural selection just behaves in the exact same way, except the environment is the is what is deciding, quote unquote, of course, it's not directional and it doesn't have agency, but it is determining, I guess would be a better way of putting it, which traits are being selected for and how quickly they're being selected for in any given context. Well, dog breeders are an authority on biology, I would say, and when dog breeders do with, say, mixed dogs, they, they never attempted to take a wolf, and they never turned it into a chihuahua. Well, wait, Bubble, like, did you realize that dogs evolve from wolves? Evolve? <laughs> what, are you an atheist? <laughs> no, 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 I'm, well, I'm saying, it, it, no, even, even if you assume, no, even if you assume the, um, no, no, the kind, the kind position so concedes that things can like you know what, what they wouldn't use the word evolve but i'm, I'm just using it like devolve would you say devolve well, well i i just don't i don't get what your contention is do you not well, think in, in the framework of any of even the evolutionary framework did domestic did modern domestic do dogs that the chihuahua or the whatever it, it did come from like what's your what do you have an alternative third party explanation here what am i so like that that feel what sunflower is feeling right now is how any scientist in any field feels when chatting to like young earth creationists or flat earthers at any given moment when they're conversing with them it's it, it he's sputtering because he's actually floored by this idea that someone would come in and say nope i don't think dogs came from wolves something that is so ridiculously well substantiated in both the fossil record, genetically speaking, and even in the human historical record, that it is mind-boggling that someone could, could actually propose that that isn't the case. Now, Bubble isn't going to actually propose an alternative here, which is very interesting. But um, notice what Sunflower said there. They wouldn't use the word evolve. Of course they wouldn't. Even though that's what it is, they can't say that. So that's why you, they tend to use the word speciate or diversify. Both of, well, the former of which is macroevolution by definition. To speciate is considered macroevolution in, in biology, always has. Um, but, you know, diversify, they slip that one in there too. What am I missing here? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, God made a chihuahua. <laughs> okay, okay, so... <laughs> that that is incredible that that beat of silence is kind of like wait wait what and and we're going to continue to get a lot of this right it's 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 an actual stunned silence and the, the great irony here is again that this is oh how the turntables right like <laughs> um but bubble let's think about this for a second if um you have it's like okay um if you have a group of short people and a couple of tall people but then only the short keep people uh keep mating are you eventually always going to have is the height going to get shorter and shorter well unless you unless you insert a tall person back into the equation well no uh, this is a i would say this is a bit of a straw man here it's not a, like uh how is this a straw man this is basic like well there's like very basic genetics here now, John is right on this, right? Like, th what he's talking about, though, is, again, it's it's the same way that natural selection works. This is the same guy that thinks that evolution is, like, dumb and stupid and, like, posts these super cringe memes almost constantly on his community page about how dumb and stupid evolution is. Um, but here he is. He's arguing for the same principles. And I bet if I sat down with John and I said, what exactly 
genetically speaking is the difference between artificial selection and natural selection. And he would say, well, there is an intelligence behind artificial selection. And it's like, okay, I understand that. Environmentally speaking, natural selection does the same thing. It picks traits that are desirable or boosts fitness, if I should be more clear. It boosts fitness in a given environment. Um, but functionally, these things occur the same way, right? Organisms with a certain trait are either coerced to breed by humans or an intelligence, or they just do because they're the only ones able to, because they're the fittest in their environment. They're, the, they're either the only ones left, or they are socially um, more uh, capable than their less fit compatriots, conspecifics. So they breed more, and you end up with the proliferation of that new selected trait. They're the same thing. Now, John might propose here that artificial selection is basically what natural selection is, that God guides natural selection. That's fine. I don't really have an issue with that. If you want to say that, that's cool. But that gets you to theistic evolution. <laughs> that doesn't get you uh, to young earth creationists, which again, I can't stress this enough. John Maddox, logical, plausible, probable, is a young earth creationist. Um, don't ask him to defend it, though. He won't. I've tried to get him to. Well, well, no, this is, this is just like a, a defunct people turning into midget, midgets happen, but you, you would never have a Caucasian turn into an Asian. That would never happen. A black person would never turn into a Japanese person. Now, of course, Bubble doesn't understand what the heck he's talking about at all. Um, th to, to defend Bubble here would be absolutely ridiculous. This guy is completely clueless when it comes to the, any words that are evidently coming out of his mouth. Um, because obviously, yes, a, a human isn't going to turn into another human. This is a fundamental misconception that happens with all creationists a lot. Individuals don't evolve. Populations do, right? So perhaps you might have a, a group of humans, right? And they live um, somewhere in the north. They begin to migrate south. Maybe they're following a herd of reindeer, right? And the sun becomes harsher. And as they continue to move south, maybe they change prey animals and they start hunting more southerly organisms, exposed to more sun, et cetera, et cetera. And the ones who have paler skin are going to be at higher risk for things like cancer. They're probably going to die younger at a higher rate than those who are born with darker skin with more melanin. Um, and as we know, skin color is a part of the natural variation of humans, right? So any human that's born with darker skin would experience a selection the further south they live, and eventually you would end in a population that has darker skin than the original population did. Um, that's, it's as simple as that, right? And you might be thinking, well, that sounds like it's going to take a long time. Yes, it would, which is why I think the concept eludes so many young earth creationists, because they, they actually don't seem to have a concept of deep time. Um, but so be it. That's never going to happen. Uh, you can have short and tall Japanese, sure. What, what do you think al albino people are? are they well, albino, albinoism is a defect. It uh, it even hurts Caucasians. I, that's do, fine, do you think, hey, listen, do you think they look that, different? Do you think anybody? Um, do you think that bulldogs are going to be in existence in another hundred years? Yeah, but uh, more sickly. Yes, the, the, they'll still be bulldogs. Right, no, more right, now, right, no, right now they don't think that bulldogs will exist in 100 years. Like, it's a serious problem. I don't, I don't really know what John is talking about here. Who is they? Um, dog breeders, I would imagine, are on the cons are consensual, uh, consensus agree. They agree. Their consensus would be, let's go with that, that bulldogs in their current state, because of their brachycephalic faces uh, and a litany of other health problems, hip dysplasia, things like that, that they are too unhealthy to breed on their own. In fact, we know this already. Most bulldogs are conceived um, by, via artificial insemination, and then they tend to be, puppies tend to be delivered by C-section. They're, they're that warped as a breed. Uh, so on their own and in their current state, John would be correct that I would imagine the consensus is that bulldogs, but I mean, probably prior to this, honestly. Um, but there have been a lot of, of programs initiated by like the, um, the American Kennel Club that are trying to bring that breed back to its original state where it's less brachycephalic um, and, and overall healthier. So, I mean, yeah, I, I would tentatively agree with that, but with the stipulation. But the, um, do you actually not think that the bulldog is not the result of deletion and uh, uh, of different genes? No, that, I mean, is, that is completely absurd. 
Bubble, bubble show, show me, wait, Bubble, show me a domestic dog breed that is not more sickly than a wild wolf. The, the, have you ever heard of mongrel vigor? The wild wolf is going to beat any domestic dog breed every time. Yeah, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter how sickly they get, they're not going to turn into a chihuahua. They're, they're turning into a defective, retarded wolf, sure. That's but... what a pug is. <laughs> no, a pug is. <laughs> That's what a pug is. A pug is not a wolf. A pug? You could describe a pug as a defective, retarded wolf. I wouldn't use that terminology, but I feel like that would probably actually be, like, scientifically accurate. So, a few things here. One, apologies for the for the language going on here. I, I, I don't think it's very kind, but we're, we're reviewing the video as it is. Um, Sal in the side chat here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but he says the evolution, or the evidence that chihuahuas are descended from wolves is that dogs and wolves can hybridize, therefore they're essentially the same kind. Now, the, the kind stuff... Eh. But the yes, there there is just an absolute <laughs> metric tons worth of support for for dog domestication and breed proliferation from the ancestral stock of of, uh, of, a, of a canid that is very much like the gray wolf. Um, now, wolves and dogs are different species, right? You've got Canis lupus and you've got Canis familiaris. These two things are separate species. They can still interbreed. Hybridization doesn't necessitate that something is the same species, unless you're specifically talking about the biological species concept. Um, but eh, we could get into why that doesn't really work a lot. Like, for instance, creationists would consider lions and tigers the same kind, and they can't hybridize and produce um, viable offspring. Um, and American and Chinese paddlefish can interbreed. Right, these things have been. These things are, couldn't be more different. Right, they they diversified in the conventional sense like 240 million years ago. Like it's been quite a long time. So genetics is weird, is the long story short. But Sunflower and John are absolutely correct here. You can select for traits in any organism and get something that is very different from its ancestral stock. Now, at one point, the the pug was fit. We made it retarded. Well, so now you're agreeing that you uh -huh. can use. Uh, no, look, if you really want to prove this idea that there was deletion, you would have to show a fossil record of s slow no, transmission. No, no, yes, no, you would. no. Now, now you're going back on your own point. You. <laughs> look, is there any sort of mechanisms here? You, you said that God made a chihuahua. Now you're ad admitting that through sort of incestuous breeding, something can become. A, a, a breed can become, like, inherently so defective that it's. Same Sal. Sal's just shaking his head. Of course, the, the elephant in the room here is that this is just a, a, a microcosm version of what creationists have done, right? Formally, now Bubble here formally is saying God created every single kind of dog, every single breed of dog, which is of course ridiculous, even within the creationist context. Now he's backtracking and saying that, well, humans did change the pug from something that was more fit and more robust into what it is now basically admitting that yes humans can tinker with the genetics of something and change it or uh, at its root level the genetics of something can change and lead to some kind of evolution this is just what creationists have done with the kinds right because formally they said no 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 god created every species as it is now we're getting the kinds argument from them and everyone else is going whoa 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 whoa, whoa just like sunflower did here you changed your position just now. Now you're saying that evolution does happen. Um, so it's just, it's very ironic here. Bad. That, you just described the whole creationist position. Uh, no, uh, it's, it's something it's coming in circles. It's very simple. Dogs and wolves hybridize. That means they can interbreed. That suggests that they had a, a common ancestor. Right. I, I, I don't, I just don't get bubbles point it's it's it just it's it's weird like you're you're saying that every single breed was created yet we can also selectively interbreed them and observe the thing that you're saying couldn't have happened to get them where they are now and this is this is the root of the problem this is this is reaching peak irony i think we've yet to climax on it but you know just take sunflower's words and apply them to the argument of kinds right? First you were saying that everything was created separately. Now you're saying that genetics actually can be manipulated and you can get something different from the ancestral stock. You can get evolution. That, 
that that's just weird to me. I don't really understand why. Like, just rewind a two hundred years instead of starting your position of every dog breed being created as it is now, and you and you get uh, you know an antithesis to your point. Like, do do you not think that dogs would look different if you? Oh. He gone. Okay. <laughs> There's more differences in between breeds of dogs than there are in between uh, humans and chimpanzees. I'm, uh, mm, I'm actually going to press X to doubt on that. Um, I, I don't think that that's... Not, I think you could potentially have some, some differences that, that span that. Um, but, you know, that would have to be two very specific, very ancestrally distant uh, breeds of dogs. Something like, uh, like the difference between a chow and a chihuahua, right? Um I mean, dogs are all very similar to one another. Humans and chimps are 98.8, right? But dogs, I mean, it, we're talking about the breed, breeds within the same species. So I, I would press X to doubt on that from, from Eddie here. I believe Eddie is actually uh, the, the, the atheist in the room. So Bubble's actually going to come back here in a second, but uh, let's, let's let them continue and we'll intersperse our snide comments. I'm going to need a citation on that, but I, I'm not going to say you're wrong. I just, I, when I hear little, like, blurbs i've heard i've heard so many blur like you know one-liners like that that i don't really i, I don't take them on face value anymore so i'm not going to say you're wrong or right but I, I i'd like a citation on that okay so um all domestic dog breeds exist in the world today in their myriad forms are the result of the domestication of the gray wolf i mean as gradual and gradually as humans selected for traits they want in their dogs hurting ability particular temperaments and size dogs diversified because we've intensively selected for specific traits in dogs, they make an ideal study animal to match genes and physical features. You better understand how genes work. I mean, anyway. It, it, note the irony here. Again, I, I'm going to continue to say that a lot. In uh, reading from a source, <laughs> right, um, and effectively using that as an authority, right? Like, John would disagree if you did that, if anybody did that, reading a paper to him on something that he fundamentally disagreed with. Um, but, you know, we're going to continue with this. It, what he read is correct, right? I'm just noting the irony of, of basically doing the thing that he's always complaining about, which is trusting the authorities. <laughs> Ironically, what he's, of course, doing. I'm, I'm not even sure what the problem was, because my understanding of Bubbles' argument is that evolution is wrong, and the creationist um, concept of like front loaded genome that deteriorates is wrong and his explanation for his, his explanation was every discrete dog breed as we know them currently is how they were created by god but then he also conceded that you could if you were to selectively uh you know inter uh sort of inbreed dog breeds now that they would become increasingly sickly and defective so i don't again i'm i'm confused on his on, on like why he chose dog breeds as we know them now to be his yeah. like special created kinds rather than just like you know i think it re i think it referred to kent ovines and nephilim trees sorry uh, my, my arguments internet. against oh yeah my internet is like really bad today for some reason He's back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's bad, but it's extra bad. That's uh, that's me when assessing any Genesis apologetics video, right? It's bad, but it's extra bad. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still just curious about, what, like, you think that God, you said, as, am I quoting you, God created the Chihuahua? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so let me ask you this: yeah. if we if we interbreed Chihuahuas selectively mm -hmm. for the next three hundred years, mm -hmm. will they look? Will that dog look different in three hundred years than it does now? It'll be a, it'll be a Chihuahua. It'll be a more uh, diseased Chihuahua, but yeah, it'll still be. Okay, a Chihuahua. and then if you were born three hundred years from now, would you look at that new diseased Chihuahua and say this was clearly created by God, and this would have never like this would not you can't breed do a dog into this thing? It's a good question. Well, in the beginning, it wasn't disease, but now it's disease. Well, how do you define disease? Like, there's some dogs that are uh, that have such bad... Um, uh, 
Well, they got a bunch of deformations, for example. Well, there's, there's some dogs have such bad genetic defects. Like, I can tell you right now, like, some dogs have hip, hip, hip dysplasia is a big one. Yeah. Um, you don't think that those are already the result? Like, wait, no. wait, how can you, do you have a personal, like, map in your head of all the dog breeds that God created? And Well, like, no, no amount of disease is going to turn into a wolf, into a chihuahua. Sure, it'll make a w diseased wolf, but no amount of disease is going to turn the, the... I don't guys. see why not. Have you ever seen a, a dwarf? Uh, okay. There's dwarfism, yeah. there's albinism, there's all kinds of things. <laughs> that I, I am well, it's because what you're... Pro bubble. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the wolf or a domestic dog breed has more genetic diversity? Before we touch on this, we, we do need to uh, we need to appreciate what kind of change we're talking about when we're we're discussing the domestication of, of dogs, right? Dog domestication is fairly well understood from this gray wolf like ancestor. It has a lot to do with selection in in this kind of unit called the, the neural crest, right? When you select for friendliness, it turns out there are a lot of different traits that are kind of linked with that, including the floppy ears, the curved tail. And we know this because there was an experiment done, um, I think it was in the 70s, in Russia with foxes, right? The, this is a famous experiment. Lots of folks know about it. Um, and actually, I think I can just pull it up. I don't know if you'll see it very well, but fox domestication experiment. Um and you ended up, basically, they were they were breeding foxes for friendliness. And what they ended up, by the end, was something like this. As they selected for friendliness in these foxes. Oops, you can't see it. There we go. As they selected for friendliness in these foxes, they ended up getting a lot of the same traits that dogs have. Suggesting that um, because, because foxes are also within Canada, the family of Canada, they also have these links with friendliness and certain kinds of morphologic um, uh, traits. So the curved tail, the floppy ears, um, and more, neonatic fe more neonatal features like big eyes, things like that. So we know how domestication works, right? We know how these, these traits ended up in, in dogs. And they're not diseased traits, right? Selecting for friendliness isn't selecting for any kind of disease or selecting for behavior. Um, now, there are certain traits that do make dogs more pathologic in nature, right? So you select for that short face, you end up with a brachycephalic snout and things like bulldogs, boxers, etc. Um, and their compressed nasal cavity, turbinates, etc. means that they can't breathe very well, right? That's pathologic. But there are also traits that can be selected for in dogs that aren't necessary pa necessarily pathologic, right? You can select for speed, you can select for strength, things like that. And to a certain degree, this is potentially going to aid the, would aid the animal in fitness if it were in a natural environment, right? Of course, you can take it too far. If you select for speed in, you know, in dogs too much, you end up with potentially heart and circulatory issues. Uh, hip dysplasia, as Sunflower mentioned, is a common one. So these things can be taken too far, um, but they aren't necessarily diseased just because they're selected for. So that just needed to be said right off the bat. Um, pull us back over here into the shit show cool let's continue uh i would say let's go with wolf okay so yeah. if the dog has a less robust genome compared to the wolf which one is which one has the capacity for variation the domesticated breed or the wolf uh, the the let's let's go with the wolf, but no amount of variation is going to turn it into a, a pit bull. Look, so we can look, we can we can do a comparison of the genomes and what, see what would have to be what, deleted what in you're order to get between you, a wolf. Hey, I'm not arguing that dog breeds are evolution from the uh, evolution. Well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Okay, in I'm talking about in relation to the dog is still dog and the wolf are still canines, right? Yeah, but a wolf is a wolf, and a uh, a German Shepherd is a German Shepherd. Right, that's a breed, not a species, right? So, what is a yeah. mutt bubble? What what is a mutt? We we need to back up for a minute because that's a that's a ooh, 
classic John Maddox, right? I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing for evolution, right? It, it, what, 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 what you have to understand is that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the genetic code. I mean, he, he'll go on and on and on if you let him. Um, but that is just evolution, right? The, the, the domestication of the dog from the wolf is evolution. You, you had a speciation event. No one here would say that a dog and a wolf are the same species, and they're not. Canis familiaris, Canis lupus. They are unique organisms. Yes, they can interbreed, but hybridizability does not mean that an organism is the same species unless you're following the biological species concept, which is not very popular for a wide variety of reasons. Um, it's it's just really interesting to to hear them make these these arguments, right? Because again, dogs and wolves they they are different species. You can select a, a wolf to get certain traits, and then it's speciated into a dog, right? You've got um, a, a very discrete group of suite of characteristics that that, that tend to distinguish it. Um, but none of that really matters to these guys. Like they're they're arguing like what what LPP just said there, what John just said there is that they're both still canines, right? Okay, let's take it a step backward, right? Let's say, okay, well, wolves, dogs, and foxes, right? Are these three things a different kind, as John is kind of alluding to here? Um, well, foxes can't hybridize with wolves, right? They, they can't. And yet the, the, these guys would still say, well, they're all still canids, so yes, they are in the same kind. Um, they've, they've done this at the Ark Encounter. I don't think very many creationists would propose that, that wolves, foxes, and dogs all belong to different kinds. Um, okay, so they're all canids, right? Well, what about uh, a cat? Throw a cat in there, right? They would say these things are different kinds. Well, why? They're all still carnivorans. They're all still members of the order carnivora. So why are they a different kind? Well, it's clear that they're different animals, they might say. Okay. <laughs> So you're eyeballing it, right? What's the difference between a cat and a dog being within the same kind, which they would disagree with, and a wolf, or and a dog, sorry, and a fox being in the same kind, which they would agree with because they're all members of the family Canidae. Um, the point being, it's, it's freaking arbitrary. The whole thing is arbitrary. There is an absolutely no standardization, no methodology, no rhyme, nor any reason to group the animals in the way that they do, which is why it's so funny that they're, they're basically saying, well, no, we accept evolution within the range of the family, within the range of the kind, right? God can allow for this speciation, they wouldn't call it evolution, within a kind, but it can only go so far. Okay, why? How far can it go? What are the genetic limits? These are the kinds of questions that they won't answer and never will. Uh, it's a mix of two dogs and they tend to be uh, infertile. Okay, is Lots a are not infertile. Uh, well, that's for example, very fertile. What are you talking about? No, yeah, have you ever, for example, most fer no, for example, if you take like a lion and a tiger, you get a tigon. No, 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 Fate. no, we're not talking about lion tiger, we're talking about like black lab and German shepherd or corgi and German shepherd. That's not going to be an infertile mud, that's going to be a no, very yeah, fertile. No, they get they, their children turn to be infertile, for example. No, they like, don't. No, they, they do. Don't. Sunflower is just objectively right here. Uh, it, they are not infertile. Mutts are like, first of all, what John said earlier is correct. Mutts have a greater genetic diversity. They are they are healthier overall than than your standard purebred would be because purebreds tend to be inbred, right? They are they are subject to a lot of of pathologies that are related to that inbreeding because, again, as I mentioned earlier. A lot of breeds have had this inbreeding taken too far. The selection for specific traits has gone too far and resulted in these kinds of abnormalities. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, 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 the uh, young earth creationist and theistic evolutionist here, John and, and Sunflower, are completely correct. What's not, or what Bubble said is incomprehensibly bad. We, this is just an objective truth. Like you, you could go out and breed two mutts now and they would have offspring that is just incredibly healthy. Um, nine times out of ten. I mean, that's an arbitrary number, but yeah, mutts are very healthy compared to purebreds, and their offspring are, I mean, they'll just breed like rabbits. Um, so. Dude, mutts, mutts do not No. <laughs> okay, look, if you try to give like, if you get yeah, like. Mutts, mutts have more genetic diversity than the purebred dog. No, what Bro, happens? Are if you just you trolling us? Mutts no. are not infertile. No, look, if you try to mix a, a German Shepherd with a Chihuahua, the child is like comes out really retarded. 
No, that's yes. not true. It does because it's like, making things okay. Up now. Hold, hold on, Sunfire, hang on. Um, Bubble, are you suggesting that a German shepherd actually can physically mate with a chihuahua, or it requires artificial insemination? Well, it, there is artificial insemination, of course, but it's the, it, it can still breed. But in the the chihuahua has a birthing okay. issues. Okay, so from a artificial selection perspective, something's being done by an external agent. In this context, a human. Mm -hmm. You're suggesting that has some just because they of the same <laughs> because they're the same kind of animal they are genetically compatible like they're the egg and sperm can join and fertilize and whatnot but yes there's massive ramifications because in the natural mm -hmm. environment they wouldn't be able to mate would they because the exactly. German shepherd, the German shepherd's penis would literally not fit inside of the chihuahua. Thank you for that, John. I re I'm glad to hear it. he is right, but you know ugh, oof, it. That's just, um, th this is very, very interesting. Again, this, this section right here. Uh, because by the logic of these guys, right? By the logic of, of John, the young earth creationist, this would mean that for all intents and purposes, right? Humans and chimps might be the same kind as well. Because even though mechanically speaking, this is, this is going to be mechanical, uh, isolation, reproductive isolation, um, in, in a pre-coital sense, right, the, the chihuahua can't physically breed with a German shepherd. They, they are anatomically are not going to fit together. Um, humans and chimps would, would be the same way, but uh, theoretically speaking, there has been work done on this idea. Thank God it's only theoretical, uh, but that artificial insemination would potentially yield a, a, a viable organism, which would make them the same kind, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's like, none of this is at all consistent with itself right these guys don't know what the kinds are they don't know where the lines are they don't know whether geographic isolation or reproductive isolation play into whether or not an animal is within or two animals are within the same kind or differ across kinds and bubble bringing this up in the realm of dog breeds is just a beautiful incredible example of how inconsistent a lot of these creationists really are to them it's so obvious that dogs are within the same kind and that they descended from wolves but they can't tell you why this doesn't extend past the fa excuse me past the family level i just like choked on my own spit because i was getting so fired up um so let's continue yeah because they're, they're they're not okay, meant for so, each other okay so why are you using them as an example because i'm trying to show they're not meant for each other <laughs> Bubble, got what about it, the got, massive got, market for like mixed got, bred dogs? People love it. to mix. They create yeah. names: Yorkie Poo, like you know, yeah, and that Labradoodle. Has disease. And Labradoodle. That creates disease. That creates How disease does that create people. disease? These are these are thriving oh, dude. Hel dogs. Dude, mutts are known to be healthier than than purely. Yeah. You know, have you ever no, heard the phrase this is false. mongrel vigor? Wait, Bubble, have you ever heard the phrase mongrel vigor? No, this, uh, this uh, combining yeah. that much have you ever heard the phrase false. mongrel okay, vigor? Okay, bubble, no. bubble, hang on, hang on. Bubble, you're being <laughs> ridiculous, dude. How much do you want to bet right now? Let's make a bet on whether or not mutts are recognized to be healthier or less healthy than pure breeds. So, objectively, John is right here. Again, I, I want to stress that in this entire argument, Sunflower and John Maddox, or logical, plausible, probable, are the ones in the right. Okay, the whole point that I'm showing this, the whole reason I'm showing this video is to show... Um, with sort of my commentary, how inconsistent at least John is um, outside of the context of dogs, right? So it's it's very 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 interesting to watch because he he his logic like will go logic his logic his logical plausible probable ability to reason uh, will go so far as to to reason this out that yes dogs are compatible with one another yes dogs descended from wolves all of this makes sense and to some degree he seems to be able to work out that just because something is reproductively isolated insofar as mechanically two organisms can't fit doesn't mean they're not related right so he's comfortable saying just because they can't hybridize naturally in the sense that they they physically can't fit together that they're still related even though it has you have to have artificial insemination to, to aid that along in the same way i bet you know, I know that most Christians would consider Asian elephants and African elephants to be related, even though they are geographically isolated from one another. Um, so if hybridizability doesn't decide the kinds, and it doesn't, because a lot of these guys would additionally consider pandas to be within the bear kind, and pandas can't hybridize with grizzlies, or again, the previous example with lions and tigers, um, even though they can, they can reason it insofar as to say, yes, okay, we, you know, we've got these kinds. If it's not reproductive isolation, 
and it's not geographic isolation, and there's no genetic line that they can draw, what decides the kinds? They obviously get the concept. This illustrates that they get the concept. So what is it? What are the limits of evolution? I don't know. Good question. I, I would say that, by and large, at least with the extant life that we have today, there, there aren't any. Um, but I'm not the one trying to overturn the paradigm now, am I? Okay, I got 10 bucks. I'll bet you 10 bucks. <laughs> you, you want to bet 10 bucks? Yeah. You're going you're, you're gonna to Venmo. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah you, I actually have it. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Um, you, you, there's witnesses. You're gonna you're gonna vend me ten bucks. Yeah, I I just feel like Bubble trolls. He gets bored and trolls people. I don't know. No, because God has clearly put barriers. Okay. So he's Thanks some... to their mixed genes, mutts are less likely to have received a high dose of any particular breed's genes. Because of this, many mutts have lower rate of health conditions such as hip dysplasia, spinal diseases, knee problems, certain cancers, heart disease, and more than their purebred counterparts. So yeah, uh, there you go. Let me find mine. I'd love to see your. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to see bubbles, a source that that doesn't exist. The, the, the sunflower and John are sitting here like, I'm sure that the that the response that I'm going to get from this person that is objectively wrong is going to be very robust and definitely not a misinterpretation of of some existing source that doesn't actually say what Bubble wants it to say. Can you taste the irony in the air of what's about to happen? Well, it's, a, it's my history, so you're going to have to give me a while. Let's just talk about something for the meantime, and then we'll get back to it. Do you, do you want me to leave and come back on because there's so much static on you? Uh, yeah, if you want to. Now, in this context, we're talking from a generality perspective. We're not going to claim that there, every single mutt is always going to... 100% of mutts are always going to be healthier. But it's, we're talking about from a general sense. The mutt is going to be healthier than the pure breed because of the, mix, the diversity of their genome. He's right. Conceptually, John is right. Again, I want that to be clear. Like, this is yes. no. This is not even controversial. No. Totally. No, this is, uh, this is a lie. Wow. Okay, troll. Okay, here. Stop, stop uh, coming onto streams to troll people, man. Uh, like, at this point, I, I, I'm convinced oh, you're troll. But... How do I scream share? I'm going to save you guys the pain and suffering, but what happens next is Bubble brings up a source. He, he can't figure out how to screen share, so they go back and forth on that for, like, a, a hot minute. Then he he screen shares, and it's like it's like a paragraph from some like forums about purebreds and why purebreds aren't bad. So it's like it's it, a little bit biased. Also, it's a blog. So and then Sunflower just like is not down with the uh, with the hustle that Bubbles trying to pull here. Okay, so that wasn't even an example. That was like a kind of sad really, example. Like that was an off the cuff comment on a blog that like it's not necessarily true like are you even it's listening genetic all right i'm done okay some disorders were more common in purebreds although the chance that your dog uh, will develop these disorders depend on its breed for example large dogs like st bernard's and great days are most likely to suffer from bloat i mean this is from uh coronary animal hospital.ca i mean this is like specific things that they're more likely to get as a purebred than as a mutt i mean yes yeah, so that doesn't stop them from uh, uh being a mutt also being a ha has its downfalls right but we're saying okay how many times do i have to repeat myself dude i literally stated that i was not arguing that mutts can't also get other things like freaking cancer so eventually Bubble gets booted. Everyone gets really fed up with him. They boot him out of there. John's really mad that Bubble won't cough up the cash that Bubble, frankly, owes him because he was wrong on mutts being infertile and also mutts being <laughs> less healthy than their purebred counterparts. Uh, but, but then we get a few gems, particularly this clip from our friend John Maddox. Like... We're talking about over with artificial selection. If you start with a male and a female wolf that have genetic diversity, they and you do selective breeding over extended periods of time, you would be able to diversify into different breeds. That is evolution, friend. That is just evolution. I don't know what to tell you, right? To reiterate, 
Canis familiaris dogs are unique from wolves. They are separate species, even though they can interbreed because the biological species concept of hybridizability is not consistent because species are an arbitrary concept. They are different species. So what John is doing here is just accepting evolution on all of its basic principles. And the only thing that he is really changing is the word artificial. So John might propose well, obviously this is very different. We're talking about artificial selection, okay? There's an intelligent agent at play here. And that is fine. Why doesn't natural selection work the same way? All right? Why can't you get organisms through natural selection that are similar to what you get from artificial selection in the sense that if an organism is more fit for its environment, the traits that it has will be passed on. It is going to be producing more offspring than its conspecifics, all right? As John said, given enough time, these traits can proliferate. We see this happening right now. So John might take issue with me saying, well, what you're saying is just the same thing. It's just natural selection. He might say, okay, you know, as I previously said, well, you have to have an intelligent agent. These are two entirely different things. How? Explain to me the limits. Because I would wager, in fact, I know for a fact, he said in, in previous streams that he's okay with adaptation. So what are the limits, again, of evolution? It's up to those who are overturning the paradigm to explain why evolutionary theory and natural selection by its various mechan or uh, evolution by its various mechanisms, so mutation, natural selection, genetic drift, and gene flow, why can't it produce the organisms that we have today? Yeah, it's uh, so many of these things, it's like, Go find a geneticist that claims that you couldn't figure out a pathway to take a wolf into a freaking chihuahua. I mean, it's deletion of genes. That's <laughs> what it takes to get to those uh, to get to those points. There's like documented. There's documented like okay, this is what was deleted between you know this breed and this breed. I mean, take it all the way back. It's not that complicated. So then, if one could show perhaps a plausible pathway from one organism to perhaps another, maybe descendant organism, through some kind of long, slow change over time process in a population using things like deletions, but John didn't mention these because I, I think he doesn't really have a solid grip on genetics in general, but also duplication events, substitutions, insertions, deletions, because we know a lot of these changes are not that complicated. As John mentioned, for instance, you can take a, a marmoset brain and insert RGAP11B, which is a, a human duplication of RGAP11A, a human partial duplication of one gene, RGAP11A, uh, and get triple the monkey brain size, right? So you get a lot of change with very simple modifications. So perhaps if one could do what John said and create these plausible pathways, across species, across genera, across families, across orders, well, then John would have to accept that, right, in order to be consistent. Unless, of course, he could provide some kind of reason by which these plausible pathways work for dogs from wolves, but not for anything else. Hmm, just kind of makes you think, doesn't it? <laughs> this as some kind of filler content. I really don't normally like to give any attention to John's channel just because I find him to be such a vitriolic and acidic person in general. Um, I generally am kind to the people. I try to be kind to the people that I that I disagree with, even when I disagree with them on, on such a, a, in my opinion, rudimentary level. Uh, but I don't really feel the need to be very kind to John. I think that he, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but John has kind of burned that bridge with me. So I'm quite okay kind of picking on him and his very 
rude general demeanor. I don't suspect that he'll actually respond to this given his he seems to be fairly cowardly when it comes to interacting with me in general. I've been trying to set up an additional debate on modern day debate with him for a couple of months now. I mean I tried a couple of months ago and I haven't really heard from him since then. Uh, which is fine, you know, he, he obviously only feels comfortable debating people when they're talking about fields that they're not in. Um, eh, hmm. I think, like I said, I think it's kind of weenie-ish, but that's my own personal opinion. So I don't suspect we'll actually get a response to this, but if we do, I want it to be very clear that there is only one question that I expect an answer to, one thing that would actually show that John has any, John and other young Earth Christians has any, you know, kind of room to, or any legs to stand on, I suppose. Why are you okay with the genetics that link dogs with wolves and not any other families with other respective related families in conventional science? Why can dogs be related to wolves by this, this chain of, this, this plausible chain of mutations? but not wolves related to bears, for instance, or humans related to chimps, for instance. So show me that line, that genetic line, uh, if you deign to do so. And if not, well, I never really expected you to in the first place. And so my gentle and modern apes, join me next time for another video. We'll see what we cover when we get to it. Stay safe out there.